This is Bob Capetta from the College of the Florida Keys, and this lesson is on factoring special polynomials. Here I have x squared minus 49 that I want to factor. It is a binomial, so the tool I'm going to use, though, is the same tool used for a trinomial, namely this factor box. First term goes in the lower left-hand corner, so x squared goes here. Negative 49 goes in the upper right-hand corner, it goes here. But I need the middle term out here but there is no middle term. But I'm gonna insert one, namely the middle term could be thought of as zero or zero x. So the number that's gonna go out in the corner is going to be zero x. Then my next question is what times what is x squared? And the answer to that has to be x times x. So indeed zero x is our middle term and x times x is x squared. Now how do I build negative 49? The option that will work will be negative 7 times positive 7. As you will see, negative 7 times x will be negative 7x here. Positive 7 times x will be positive 7x there. And of course, negative 7x plus positive 7x is 0x. So we have successfully factored x squared minus 49. Reading the results, x plus 7 is one of the factors. x minus 7 is the other factor. We are successful, and that's our answer x minus 7, x plus 7. Now, what this is, is an example of a difference of two perfect squares. x squared is something squared, namely x. 49 is something squared, namely 7. x squared minus 7 squared. The case we're looking at here is a case of a difference, a subtraction problem of two perfect squares. That's our strategy. So our next example is also a difference of two perfect squares. 9p squared q to the fourth minus 16r to the eighth. A little bit more complicated this time in terms of how we're going to evaluate it. But our process will be the same. We draw a box and in the lower left hand corner we put the first term, 9p squared q to the fourth. And in the upper right hand corner we put the last term, negative 16r to the eighth. Now I need a middle term. Well, there is no middle term, so I'm just going to go ahead and call the middle term 0. So in essence, the problem becomes 9p squared q to the 4th plus 0 minus 16r to the 8th. If you wanted to be fancy, you could say 0p q squared r to the 4th, but that's not really necessary. Just go ahead and say the middle term is 0. Put that on the outside. Now we ask our question, how do you make 9? 3 times 3. How do you make p squared? p times p. How do you make q to the fourth? q squared times q squared. So we get that 3pq squared times 3pq squared is 9p squared q to the fourth. And how do we make negative 16r to the eighth? How about 4r to the fourth and negative 4r to the fourth? Notice 4 times negative 4, negative 16. r to the fourth times r to the fourth, r to the eighth. So that works. But now how about our cross terms? 3 times negative 4, negative 12, times p, times q squared, times r to the fourth in this cell. Down here, r times 3, 12, times p, times q squared, times r to the fourth. And we get that. And do those two middle terms add up to give me 0? Does negative 12 p q squared r to the fourth plus 12 p q squared r to the fourth equal 0? And the answer to that is yes. So we are successful. We have uh, successfully factored that difference of two squares. And our answer will be that 9p squared q to the fourth minus 16r to the eighth is 3pq squared minus 4r to the fourth, 3pq squared plus 4r to the fourth. So our strategy is the same strategy for all differences of two perfect squares. So in general, you will see in textbooks this formula for a squared minus b squared but I want to show you where that formula comes from. If I want to factor a squared minus b squared, put a squared in the lower left, b squared in the upper right, with a middle term of zero, zero is our middle term. How do we build a squared, a times a? How do we build negative b squared? How about negative b times positive b? Our middle terms here, a times negative b, negative ab, a times positive b, positive ab. Negative AB plus positive AB is zero, so those go away, and we have successfully factored it. 
And what's our result? When we factor a squared minus b squared, we get a minus b times a plus b. Now, frankly, I prefer to just use the factor box all the time, but you can use this formula. Let me show you how the formula works with the following example. So that's what we know. a squared minus b squared after we factor it is a minus b times a plus b. So if I have 16x squared y to the fourth minus 81z to the tenth, I need it in the form a squared minus b squared. Something squared minus something else squared. 16 is 4 squared. x squared, of course, is x squared. y to the fourth is y squared squared. So 4x y squared squared is the same as 16x squared y to the fourth. 81 is 9 squared. z to the tenth is z to the fifth squared. Now 4xy squared is the square root of this first piece. 9z to the fifth is the square root of the second piece. Now I can use this formula. I know what a is. I know what b is. So in my example up here, we have a squared minus b squared is a minus b times a plus b. So the a that I'm going to use here is going to be 4xy squared, and the b is going to be 9z to the fifth. So my answer is a minus b times a plus b. a minus b times a plus b, 4xy squared minus 9z to the fifth times 4xy squared plus 9z to the fifth. And we can factor it quickly using that formula, but frankly, I prefer to use the factor box. Use the factor box with a zero in the middle, and I think the problem is less challenging. Now, this strategy works whenever we have a difference of two perfect squares. That means there is a minus sign between them. But what if it's a plus sign? What if I have a sum of two perfect squares? For example, if I ask you to factor x squared plus 25, well, let's use our same strategy. Let's use the box. First term, lower left corner. Last term, upper right corner. Middle term, there is no middle term. Make it 0 or 0x. Zero and what are our choices here? x squared could be x times x. 25, 5 times 5. Does that work? 5 times x is 5x. 5 times x is 5x. Is 5x plus 5x, does that equal 0x? No. So x plus 5 times x plus 5 is not the solution. Well, let's try another one. What else could 25 give me? Again, x times x is x squared. How about negative 5 times negative 5? Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Negative 5x here and negative 5x there. Does negative 5x plus negative 5x equal 0x? Again, the answer is no. Now, you could try 25 and 1. No way to get 0. Negative 25 and 1, no way to get 0. Nothing you try will enable you to get 0. So what we have here is we have a situation where x squared plus 25 cannot be factored. In that case, we say that it is a prime polynomial. And in general, a sum of two perfect squares, that is with no common factors, of course, cannot be factored. Sums of two perfect squares are prime polynomials, typically. So a difference of two perfect squares can always be factored. A sum of two perfect squares usually cannot be factored. But now we're going to look at cubes, sums and differences of cubes. Now what are cubes? 1 to the third power is 1. 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 to the third power, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 to the third power, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 to the third power, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So it's nice to have a few perfect cubes in mind. So I'm going to look at the following example. I want to factor x cubed minus 8. Most textbooks will give you a formula to use for this. I prefer to use another box-based strategy. But before we do that, let's convince ourselves that this really is a difference of two perfect cubes. How am I going to do that? Well, I'll recognize x times x times x is x cubed. X is used there three times as a factor. Therefore, the cube root of x cubed is x. Pretty obvious that x cubed is a perfect cubed. Perfect cubed. Now, how about negative 8? We have x cubed minus 8. How about negative 8? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So therefore, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. 
And this process for factoring a difference of two perfect cubes is going to start with the cube roots. I'm going to draw a box and put the cube roots up the side. So here's a box that has to be a 3 by 2 box instead of a 2 by 2 box. One cube root is x, the other cube root is negative 2. That's what we start with. Now what do we do with x cubed minus 8? Remember in our previous examples, the first term went in the lower left hand corner and the last term went in the upper right corner, and that is still going to be the case. x cubed in the lower left corner, first term, last term, negative 8 in the upper right corner. And then our goal is to fill in these four boxes plus these three numbers down here. Now you know length times width equals area, x times something equals x cubed. So the number down here is what I multiply x by to get x cubed. That's my first question that I'm going to ask. What times x equals x cubed? And the answer, of course, is x squared. So where does x squared go? x squared will go down here. Again, x times x squared is x cubed. Now multiplying negative 2 times x squared goes here. And that slot gives me negative 2x squared. But I need all the x squareds to go away. My final result can just be x cubed minus 8. So I need all the x squareds to disappear. I have negative 2x squared. And the question I'm asking is, what do I need to add to the negative 2x squared to subtract out? Well, how do I get rid of negative 2x squared? Of course, add positive 2x squared. So positive 2x squared will go in this slot. Now, x times something has to equal positive 2x squared. Well, it's got to be positive. x times what is positive 2x squared? How about positive 2x? That's my next question. What do I need to multiply by x to get positive 2x squared? And the answer is 2x. So positive 2x is going to go down here. Let's check it. Positive 2x times x, positive 2x squared. Now, how about positive 2x times negative 2? That will be negative 4x. All of the x's have to disappear. So what do I add to negative 4x for 4x to cancel? The answer is, of course, positive 4x. So I'll put positive 4x here in this missing cell. And I have one more number to get. Positive 4x is here. x times what number is positive 4x? x times positive 4, of course, is positive 4x. So. Uh, we're going to put the positive 4x there. And then our question is, what do I multiply by x to get 4x? What do I multiply by x to get 4x? Of course, positive 4. So a positive 4 goes down here, but we always need to check our last cell. Let's make sure we've made no mistakes. Does positive 4 times negative 2 equal negative 8? Yes, it does. Big check mark. We feel good about our answer. So we read off our factors. x minus 2 is one of them x squared plus 2x plus 4 is the other. So we say x cubed minus 8 is x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. Let's look at a more complicated one. I have x cubed minus 27x to the 6th. I need the cube roots to start with. So putting the first term here in the lower left and the last term here in the upper right, Cube root of x cubed is x, so x is going to go out here. How about the cube root of negative 27? That's negative 3. So I'll need a negative 3 here, but not quite enough. I also need the cube root of y to the 6th, which would be y squared, y squared, y squared. The cube root of y6 would be y squared. So I'll have an x down here and a negative 3 y squared up there. And now we're back to our process x times what is x cubed? x times x squared is x cubed, so x squared goes here. Now let's multiply negative 3y squared times x squared will give me negative 3x squared y squared up here. I need that to cancel out, so down here I go with positive 3x squared y squared. Now what do I multiply by x to get positive 3xy squared? x squared y squared? Well, I need a 3 and I need a y squared, but I need x times what is x squared. I also need another x. 
So we need a 3xy squared down here. When I multiply that by negative 3y squared, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Then I need an x. y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. And I want that to cancel out. What am I going to add to get that to cancel out? A positive 9xy to the fourth. What do I multiply by x to get 9xy to the fourth? All I need is 9y to the fourth. So multiply by positive 9y to the fourth. We always need to check our last cell. 9 times negative 3, negative 27. y to the fourth times y to the second, y to the sixth. Check. Feeling good about it. So my answer will be x minus 3y squared and x squared plus 3xy squared plus 9y to the fourth. That's what our answer looks like. So we've just done two examples for differences of two cubes. But here's the thing. In general, you cannot factor a sum of two perfect squares, but you can factor a sum of two perfect cubes. So if I have something cubed plus something cubed, I can't factor it. That was not the case with the squares. So let's do one more example. I have 8x cubed plus 125. I need to build a box, and I need to find the cube roots. Box first, lower left term is the first term, 8x cubed. Upper right term, the last term, plus 125. I need the cube roots on the outside. Cube root of a is 2. Cube root of x cubed is x, so I'll have a 2x out here. Cube root of 125 is 5. I'll have a plus 5 there. Cube root of x cubed is 2x. Cube root of 125 is 5. There they go. Cube roots always on the outside, on the left side. 2x times what is 8x cubed? I need a 4. I need an x squared. So 4x squared will go down here. Multiplying 4x squared times 5, I will get 20, positive 20x 20 squared here. I need positive 20x squared to disappear, so I need negative 20x squared here. What do I multiply 2x by to get negative 20x squared? Well, I need 2 times negative 10, and I also need another x, so negative 10x sounds like that'll be the answer. Then 5 times negative 10x is negative 50x. What do I need to add to negative 50x for that to go away? That'll be positive 50x. 2x times what is positive 50x? Well, I need no more x's. But I need a 25. 2 times 25 is 50. So I need plus 25. And always check the last cell. 25 times 5 is 125. Check. So this is correct. Our answer will be 2x plus 5 times 4x squared minus 10x plus 25. So again, a difference of two squares can be factored. A sum of two squares cannot. A difference of two cubes can be factored. A sum of two cubes also can be factored. And that will conclude this lesson.